Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's John O. As promised, I have another Photoshop tutorial for you uh, this time um, and how uh, best to create uh, puddles, perhaps in a street scene or something like that, uh, even though the conditions were dry when you took the photograph. I've got two methods for you. The first one, quite simple with a, a very basic effect, but nonetheless quite useful. Uh, and then if you can stick around a much more um, intricate effect, but the results are much more realistic in my opinion. So let's waste no more time. Let's jump straight in and get started. So this is um, <clears throat> an image that I uh, downloaded from Pixabay. So it's uh, you know a royalty free stock photo of a street uh, somewhere abroad. Um, and what I'm going to basically do is just first of all show you uh, a very simple way that we can add uh, puddles and water to the street here. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll show you a, a bit more technical, a bit more advanced way, but something that gives much more pleasing results, much more realistic results. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is duplicate the layer. So we don't want to work on the original photograph. OK, and the easiest way of doing this is to right click the layer over here and uh, choose duplicate layer uh, and I'm just going to call this puddles so that uh, I know what I'm working on so anything we do now is on this layer only and the background layer the original photograph is untouched okay so the first thing that I'm going to do is just mask out the area um, that I want to actually um, put the puddles on I don't want it to be on the walls or on the uh, uh, you know windows etc I just want it on these cobbled street here so uh, basically I'm going to take my uh, tool here my polygon tool uh, to lasso um, an image or lasso an outline rather uh, of the bit that I want to work on so we can start outside the photograph and just basically work along the bit that I'm looking to actually edit so you don't have to be too precise but just generally speaking marking out the street area we can go up into this bit a little bit Obviously, if you were doing this for real, you'd perhaps be a little more careful and take your time. I can actually go off the image again and we'll just make sure it joins up here. So we can see with the sort of dotted line here, this is the area that I'm working on. Next thing I need to do is I need to turn that into a mask and we can do that using this little button down here, create a layer mask. Now at the moment, the layer mask and the image are linked together, but we've got a little uh, sort of chain link icon here uh, so you can see it's linked to the layer if I click that it'll disappear and now the layer and the mask are unlinked and if we click on the uh, actual layer this is the bit we're going to work on rather than the mask itself next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, cause the reflection itself the bit that, of the puddle that actually obviously creates the effect so up to edit up here and we're going to go to transform and we're just going to simply do a vertical flip and as you can see now, uh, it's flipped the uh, this part only of the image upside down so that we can uh, create this sort of mirror effect. Doesn't much look like a puddle at the moment. Uh, bear with us, we'll get to that. So we're now going to take our eraser tool and uh, obviously adjust the brush size to suit your yourself in terms of how big you want it to be but make sure that your hardness is set to zero we want sort of soft edges to the to the brush we don't want it sort of you know definite lines um, I've reduced my opacity to about 70% fiddle around with that to see what sort of uh, effect you're looking for but basically what we're going to do is going to take that brush now and we're going to start sort of deleting some of the affected layer leaving behind the original uh, uh, layer underneath the background layer underneath uh, until we're happy that we got areas that look like puddles and hopefully you can immediately see what I'm talking about here got to be a little random we don't want it to look too uniform obviously but gently remove parts of the mask to leave behind some puddles um, kind of happy with that 
like I say, I'm not taking too much time. I, I'd urge you to sort of uh, be a little more uh, diligent in how you do it. But we've generally got some sort of puddles on the street. Um, they're a bit too crisp, though. Uh, it's an exact copy of the upper images being replayed down here. Um, so I want to sort of fix that because that's not natural looking for a puddle. So we can blur it a little bit. If we go up to filter here and choose blur. And what we're looking for is motion blur. Um, make sure our angle is from left to right, so zero degrees basically. And I've got a, a distance of about 20. Again, fiddle with that. You can see immediately if I reduce it, uh, the more I reduce it, the less blur there is. But about sort of 20, 25 is usually about right. If I apply that now, you can see it's taken some of that sort of crisp cleanliness off it. So that's a, a basic um uh, and your basic version of what I'm looking at. If I turn the layer on or off, you can see what I mean. You can see the effect that it's had. Um, but I'm going to show you now, say, a more uh, advanced technique. And uh, as I say, a little bit more work, but I think the results are a little bit more impressive. They look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need is something called a puddle map. Um, Sounds a little odd, and rather than me explaining what it is, it's probably better if I show you. If you do a search on Google for Puddle Maps, uh, you can download um, many different ones. Um, some are free, some you have to pay for. Um, but to be honest with you, um, I prefer just to make my own. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do File, New, and we're going to make a new blank image. Um, the size doesn't really matter yet because we're going to sort of stretch it and manipulate it. So I've got a... Um, uh, an option here to do sort of 1500 by 1500 picture. Um, let's just put that uh, there. Um, what I'm going to do is um, go up to filter and I am going to render and render some clouds much the same way as I did uh, on a previous video, um, which I'll leave a link to in the description when I was creating sort of mist and fog. Um, if you're not happy with the way it looks and you, you'll get a feel for this, um, this is a little bit flat i'd rather a bit more of a mix so what we could do is just repeat that process we could do filter clouds and just keep going until you get something that you like the look of um, and you know as i said to you uh, when you see what it does it, it might give you a better idea um, i'm just going to adjust it slightly so i'm going to just uh, add a curves layer and what i'm going to do is just um, take across um, the two sliders to actually um, fit the uh, the histogram here. So I've got one at one side of the histogram, one at the other. Basically what I want is I want a bit more definition between the white and the black. I want it to be a little, uh, little harsher, if that makes sense. Um, so again, have a fiddle around until you're happy with it. Uh, I might even take that over a little bit more so there is more of a, a balance between black and white if that makes sense but again you, when you see what this does uh, it might make a little more sense uh, as to what you're looking for what you're looking for out of your map sort of thing so I've got that ready um, don't need to do anything with it yet that's just there ready for when I use it so if I just go back to our original image okay so I've got everything back to the way it was this is my original image again got rid of all the other layers that I had created. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is create a new layer. So just click on the plus button down here uh, again, so that we uh, are not touching the original image if we need to go back at all. Uh, sort of non-destructive edit, if you like. Um, the first thing that I need to do then is uh, give uh, the um, adjustments, give, give the, the work that I'm about to do a plane to work on. What I mean by that is, obviously this is a flat image, but it's of a 3D scene. So I need to tell Photoshop how that 3D exists, if you like. So this street is a plane that sort of obviously starts down here wide and in perspective, you know, travels back into the distance and obviously narrows. So basically what I need to do is give it a vanishing point. So we can do that by going up to filter up here, and selecting vanishing point and what we need to do then basically is is sort of map out what how the perspective in this image works so we're just going to click um, somewhere down here and using perspective lines which if you've done any drawing in the past you'll know what i mean uh, go back into the distance somewhat and we're going to sort of go across at a relatively flat angle here and then we're going to click and come down doesn't matter about sort of going over the lines, but I'm trying to, oops, 
mark out what the uh, uh, perspective, what the vanishing point of that image was. So obviously, if these lines were to carry on, they would meet somewhere back at infinity, you know, back back here. Uh, so just tweak it around until you're happy. Oops. Um, but something along those lines. So that's our vanishing point. And once you're happy uh, what, with, with the perspective that you've got, you can just click OK. What we're going to do now is then is go over to the map. And as I say, it will become apparent what this is going to do. But what I need to do is get it into our image. So I'm going to do Control or um, uh, Command A if you're on a map, but Control A on Windows. So it's all selected. Uh, Control C to copy it and then back into our image and back into a vanishing point, which it will have remembered. And then we can just Control V to actually paste that in. And if I then drag it down to our perspective here, you'll see that it actually uh, creates it on a plane uh, like uh, uh, like I was describing. So what we can do now is adjust this so it sort of fills up the plane that I've got. If we do Control T uh, to transform it, I can then drag these out so that it fills. Oops, fills the area that we're working with. Oops, there we go. Doesn't matter if you go over a little bit because obviously this won't actually appear at the end. It's just to give it that texture. So um, that's basically sort of filling up the area. You know, if you wanted to, if your map wasn't big enough, you can make copies and, and paste them into it. But the trouble is, you want to make it so that it's a relatively random pattern here, which is obviously what we're trying to achieve. Puddles don't appear in a uniformed way. But once you're happy that that's on the correct plane, uh, we can just click OK and it will take us back to uh, our image. So the next thing we want to do is actually save our map. So the first thing uh, I need to do is just sort of blank uh, everything else out. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, solid color, make sure black is selected, click OK, but drag it down. So below our map layer uh, and so uh, it, it blanks off everything else uh, in the image. Uh, reselect our layer then and uh, do another adjustment. We're going to do a curves adjustment. And what we're going to do here is basically just better uh, define the dark and light. So um, basically just drag this over, this pointer over a little bit to brighten up the brightest areas and leave dark the darkest areas. Don't obviously overdo it. You know, you're going to have to fiddle around depending on the, the original map that you rendered. So have a fiddle around. But that's the kind of... Uh, ratio of dark to light that you're looking to get. So let's just get this out of the way. What I'm going to do is basically group all these elements of the map together so that any adjustments I make on it in future are done on the whole thing rather than just individual bits. So uh, have the top one selected. I can press control and sorry, shift rather and have the last one selected and then control G groups them all together. And what I can do then is just rename the group map so that everything's in, in one little container, if you like. If I go to the channels tab, I want to make a selection. If I hold down control and click the RGB uh, icon here, what that's done is it's made a selection based on the brightest areas of our map. Brighter areas are more selected and then darker areas are less selected, for want of a better way of putting it. Um, and what I'll do is make a mask based on that. So the little mask button down here, click on that, our alpha mask uh, effectively is that selection and we'll be using that in a moment. Um, go back over to the layers menu and what we can do is just turn off the map for now so that we're working back with our original image and what I'll do is control D to deselect it so that it's not sort of uh, uh, highlighting it, not, not in the way, not make, putting us off as such. Okay, so uh, as of well, the previous technique, I need to now mark out the areas that I actually want to um, have uh, the puddles in. I don't want them up walls or anything else. I just want them on the street floor, if you like. So again, I'm going to use my polygon tool. And as before, uh, I'm just going to mark around, generally speaking, the area that I want to have uh, affected. Like I say, I recommend you take a lot more care and time over what you're doing than I am. Um, this is literally just for demonstration purposes. Uh, so just generally getting an outline of what I'm looking to do. And oops, it 
doesn't really matter too much in the distance because we're not going to better see the puddles anyway. But like I say, it's just to take a lot more care than I am doing. And again, I can go off the image and just make sure we're connected up there. So there's our, uh, our selection highlighted. Okay, next thing we need to do is to start to make our reflection. So if we grab hold of our background layer and just drag it down over the little plus symbol here, let go. This makes a, uh, a copy of the background layer. Uh, but because we already had a uh, selection, uh, it's only made a copy of, of, of this part of the selection, if you like, rather than the whole layer. Uh, and what we can do now uh, is create a mask uh, on that uh, copy by hitting the button here. And what we're going to do is we're going to call that reflection. And as before, to um, actually make the um, um, reflection, what we're going to do is uh, copy, uh, sorry, transform this. We're going to flip it upside down. The trouble is the mask and the um, layer are actually linked as before so um, when you used to click on the little link here to get it rid of it it's just this uh, layer we want to turn upside down we don't want the the mask turned upside down as well uh, and again while well, with it selected we need to edit transform and flip vertical so as before we flip everything upside down now you may need to drag it down a little bit to give it the sort of right part of um, reflection really you know it, it should uh, match up if you like so uh, we don't want the actual road appearing anymore but we need to get to the point where uh, it looks as though it's actually the, the correct part of the reflection this sign matches up etc etc okay so we need to create another mask now to basically load up the the puddles to, to block out the areas of this reflection uh, and to obviously show them in the correct sort of pattern that we used uh, that alpha map for so the first thing we're going to do is just uh, group the uh, uh, the puddles to group the reflection together with it highlighted we're going to go to uh, select and load selection and our alpha uh, channel that we created earlier is an option there for us to select so if we click OK that loads the selection up all we need to do now is click on the mask button to create the mask and as you can see our puddles have appeared with that pattern uh, reflection showing through in some places uh, and not in others the only other thing I would say if your uh, puddles are looking a little bit stark is to just take the opacity here and perhaps just reduce it a little bit just to make it a little bit more realistic allow some of the original image to show through which will kind of um, color the puddles to fit the scene if you like because the road color shows through but obviously you know fiddle around with that to see what what suits you best um, but other than that uh, there you have it um, if I just turn the uh, the layer off that's the before image and then back on with our puddles, uh, with the rain, etc. So there you go. I hope that was of interest. Bit of a longer video. Sorry about that. Thank you once again for all your support. Absolutely superb. I am really, really chuffed. Um, please, uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to get more updates. Uh, like this video, comment, share it with your friends. Would absolutely be wonderful. Until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll see you again soon.